Fantastic. Thanks so much again. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, Stephen Boom Larson. Thank you so much, Stephen, for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Boom. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, man. This is That's great. Right. <laughs> Now, for those very few lonely souls who don't know who Mr. Larson is, do you want to give us like a little bit of a boom statement, please? Yeah, yeah. You know, I uh, I started working at uh, at ClickFunnels. Um, I was never planning on that. I uh, was building lots of companies and trying a lot of stuff in college, and most of it was failing. But I did have some little successes here and there. And um, when I started learning about what funnels were. Um, Funny enough, even before I ever had ClickFunnels, the rest of my stuff just started working better. You know, the principal start was, was actually blessing the rest of my stuff. And um, I wanted to go to Russell's event and I have money. So I started trading funnels for plane tickets and hotel nights and at, at Russell's thing and um, uh, kind of bootstrapped my way there. Didn't barter enough. Uh, instead of getting paid for funnel building projects, I just asked them to go buy me like tickets. <laughs> so... Uh, I went and uh, I didn't get it. I didn't bar enough nights the last night. So I ended up having to stay up the whole night in the, la in the lobby, which, you know, but anyway, it was, it was good. It was all part of the story, all part of the journey. And I ended up, I was going to go be a support guy. That's the role. I figure, you know, proximity's power. I'm graduating college in a few days. Let's just go be a support guy at ClickFunnels. And uh, they had other intentions and I didn't know that. So they had me come in two days after I got back from this event and um, and I went and I interviewed and 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 got the job working at ClickFunnels. So uh, pretty amazing. So and then I ended up leaving a few years later after that. Built hundreds of funnels with Russell, and then um, yeah, kind of do my own thing now. So that's kind of the quick and dirty, I guess. That's how most yeah, people know yeah. me. That and the one funnel way thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And I mean, to get that, obviously, the mindset was that of a optimistic. Uh, Asseline opportunistic, right? Yeah, yeah. you kind of had to learn to love some discomfort. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, listen, I come from similar backgrounds and sometimes that's the best issue. That's the best MBA, the street MBA, right? Yeah, yeah it's if, true. I, if I dig into a little bit when you left ClickFunnels, because that was like the dream job for many kids, right? But you said, no, yeah. I'm going to go and prove to myself that I can do it on my own, right? Is that, was that the mindset? Yeah, and it was uh, that was one of the toughest decisions I've made even to date, you know, because, I mean, it's funny. It's funny how much hate mail I got for that, for going and leaving ClickFunnels. I got a lot of people who chewed me up, and I was like, I know I'm an entrepreneur, you know, I'm, I'm not. Uh, well, from I'm within go... ClickFunnels? What's that? From within ClickFunnels, you got the hate? No, from like audiences, oh, you know, see, not within yeah. ClickFunnels. Uh, no, no. Um, Russell actually was, was super amazing about it. I mean, he was like, hey, man. I get it. And he goes, I, I, he told me it was probably like two months into working for him. He saw me looking at another entrepreneur who was just starting out and he was watching me watch him. And he was like that night he voxed me and he goes, Hey man, you know, and I know that you could go do that. Thanks for hanging out for a while. But when the time comes for you to leave, just know, I already understand. And I was like, that's so cool for him to say that. So we just we just went and uh, just kept cranking hard together, and then eventually it came this time. You know, we're just very open dialogue about it. Eventually it came this time where it just I knew I needed to go, so that's how it worked. And he it's was terrifying, totally fine. right? What was that? It's terrifying, right? Even though you're an entrepreneur, the moment you actually cut the cord and you think, now I'm on my own. Yeah, that was a little, that was a little freaky because what was hard is is um. I mean, I had been teaching so many strategies, you know, for so many, I was the first two comic club coach. There was no one else. It was me and 600 students. That was before <laughs> OFA existed. And it was, uh, you know, and, and when Russell couldn't get on stage, I did, you know? And so it was like, it's crazy. So, but like, I, I started developing a little bit of a complex. I was like, I need to go do this also. Um, and uh, so I decided to leave. And um, that, again, that was, that was very hard. But it was to test some strategies that I started putting together on my own outside of what I was teaching, which was Russell's material, you know? And so I was like, if I'm going to leave, and if I'm actually a marketer, how can I lead? How can I leave leading? Meaning, how can I leave loudly? I need to do this documenting it, being super open, very vulnerable. Hey, 
So let's go in the most sucky situation we can imagine. So I left with no product on purpose, no product, no funnel. Uh, the only thing I'd been doing was a little bit of publishing. And, um, and four days later, you know, very cash flow positive. And, and, um, and it's because I, I had done a lot of creating of my own frameworks. And so, yeah, that, that's how it happened. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I mean, maybe I'm reading too much in between the lines, so feel free to absolutely throw me off. But it sounds to me as if you're the kind of guy, because obviously I followed you a little bit, although I haven't read your autobiography, if you have one. It sounds to me that like you're the kind of guy that wants to prove to himself more than anybody else that you can do stuff on your own. You don't need a crutch, right? Was that part yeah. of the reason? Was that you didn't want the crutch of the, the Branson name? Yeah, you know, it was it was part of the reason. It was um, I really did develop a bit of a complex. I was having a hard time because I was teaching these strategies and people were having success with it, but I didn't have my own stories. Right. And um, um, we we figured out, you know, I like you. I mean, you got your book right behind. I mean, you're yeah. a big guy, man. I mean, like you you anyway. I value mastery yeah. above the audience thing, like the fame piece. Like that's cool, but like. I mean, I really don't care. <laughs> like, it's not my motivating driver. It is. I I want to read all of my books. You know, like, oh, like there's more back there. There's tons of shelves of it back there. Yours is back there, and uh, uh, I want to finish going through them. And I want to go to this side now and finish filling out all my whiteboards over there and like, I love it. digest it and figure out the like the best way. Like, that's what turns my crank. And um, and so that's why I felt like I needed to leave for a lot of reasons. So yeah. I'm glad I did. It was hard though. And then you kind of came back in a very different uniform, right? Yeah, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, it was, um, uh, I was still doing some of the fulfillment for what Russell had sold after I left, yeah. but that only went for like a month. And then probably about eight months goes by. And he and I, you know, we, 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 were, we still were seeing each other. We, we were watching each other, but we didn't like, we didn't talk too much. Not on purpose. There's nothing. There's no riff. There's nothing weird. We're just we're both busy, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I was trying to get this fledgling thing off the. I was bootstrapping it from a bedroom, and uh, in my house. And um, and uh, you know, I get this vox from him one day, and he's like, "Hey man, I'm gonna do a challenge. You want to do this challenge?" I said, "No." <laughs> Are you kidding me? Right. Well, I, I was like, I don't know. I was super apprehensive. Um, I, I the the immediate answer was not yes. I was like, yeah, like you want me to come in and be the heavy, basically. <laughs> then he goes, well, yeah, man, you got this ability to yell at people without yelling at people. And I was like, I've never thought about that. <laughs> he goes, it's in your DNA, man. I'm like, all right. So eventually, yeah, I kind of came back doing that um, just as a contractor, you know, but now we've totally automated it. I'm not involved at all with it, so. Yeah. So listen, I've gone through the uh, OFA a few times and I actually got some students of mine going through it too uh, at the moment, the 1st of June and, and the one after, I believe. And, uh, and I coached them through. I've got a small group and I put them in and I coach them because the OFA is great. You guys do it. I mean, in 30 days you teach, you know, what many marketers need two years to learn, you know, yeah. but obviously there's, the, the, you know, there's coaching needed and the support needed for those that move at different pace. So I do yeah. that. And, uh, and I think that I speak on behalf of anybody that I ever put through the OFA, that you are the, the key driver. Now, I got pissed off at you so many times. Let me tell you why. Because I did my first OFA in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. And then, boom! <laughs> just that out of me every morning. I was like, man, you can't do this in, in the morning. It's absolutely, you know, you bring your character. You're so genuine. I think that was people love, you know. They, they really love your genuine attitude you don't give a damn you capitalist pig t-shirt i mean it's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's awesome i really love it you don't need me to tell you but it's amazing thanks man i really appreciate that a lot actually that is the only program i yell like that <laughs> it, it was just i was like you want me to yell he's like yeah he's like i need you to be the first layer of security and sifting before my support team he's like so your job is to go I said, that's the role? He's like, yeah, you're actually trying to create a barrier so only the cool people make it through. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. It's an, important, it's an important barrier, isn't it? Because I think once I've done these analyses in two, in two funnels, in two uh, OFAs, now first uh, mission of the first week, 875 comments. Yeah? Yeah. Mission seven of week four, eight comments. Right. right. 
people drop off because everybody, and I wrote a long post about this. Everybody has the same coaches, the same material, the same instruction, the same everything. Yet 95% doesn't make it to the end, right? Yeah. Yes, granted, some life stuff happens, but mostly it's because anything is hard work, right? Yeah. You can make it simple, but you can't make it easy for people. And that's, that's why true. I started coaching these people because it, it isn't enough. And I think what you say, I think you say right off the bat, you say, guys, we're not going to spoon feed you. And I think that's such an important message because it manages the expectations of people. So, you know, props to you for being so transparent about it. Oh, thanks. I, that morning before the first one, I was like, I got to set some precedence here because when there were 600 students with the old programs, which is me, like, I mean, it just takes your life. It's so intense. And people think that they, they, they think that you're the one to save them, yeah. you know, or, or this magic pill. And I'm like, oh, so I got up early that morning and wrote down those seven, my list of 17 rules. And I just I was like, look, you know, I was like, this is a contract. This is an agreement. It's two way. I'm not here to save you. Um, so I appreciate that. Cause it was a little bit of tough love. Some people love it. <laughs> a lot of people hate it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you've been in this kind of industry a lot longer than I have. So whether you say it or not, it remains true. You cannot possibly spoon feed everyone, right? And so whether you say it or not, it's true. But if you say it, you know, I prepare psychologically. Okay, well, let me, let me roll up my sleeves now, you know? So I think yeah. it's a good thing that you say, you know, obviously I'm here to say that. I'm not going to disagree with you, but I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. I think it prepares people for the mental toughness there is because this is hard. This is not a joke. This is hard. Yeah. I mean, I, I think on my first um, OFA, I made five and a half thousand dollars, right? It's and, awesome. And everybody went crazy. And I thought, why you go crazy? I'm just doing what I've been told. And then at the end of the challenge, I realized why, because there was only two of us, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. I, I know you're very, very busy. So I want to ask you two questions that are a bit more technical, if you don't mind, about yeah, funnels. Yeah. <laughs> you know funnels? A, a little bit. A little I've bit. heard about them. Cool. One is generic and you could say, look, go screw yourself. I'm not going to answer that question. I'm not try <laughs> <laughs> if you were to point out the three things that make a great offer, what would they be? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, funny enough, I was just speaking on a summit about this um, because the problem is that people think of a product and an offer are the same thing and they are not at all, you know, and uh, it's the reason why two dentists you know who largely do the exact same thing one can be making a lot of money one can be broke um a lot of it comes down to the offer now there's other far you know external things in that there can be there's the message there's positioning there's all these things that go into it and how how you spread the offer around and the knowledge of the offer around but when it comes down to it you can have the same product, but be very, have very different offers. And, and that really is the first step of a marketer's role uh, when you're executing and actually doing the funnel game. So I always tell people, you know, it's really interesting. I, I love this question. I, I decided, I don't know what, it's probably about a year and a half ago, right when I started so much of OFA had been automated that I was kind of starting to not be involved as much anymore. Um, I was like, what are all the things? You know, I believe that questions invite revelation, right? And so I have this problem, I call it my problems whiteboard. Um, and I list out a whole bunch of problems and I'm not, I'm not trying to figure out the answer. I'm trying to figure out if I should try to answer it. And so I have this problems whiteboard and one of the things that I started writing down on there was, what are all the things that we ask people to know and understand in order to have success? And it was like a huge list. It's like. I mean, all from messaging all the way down to SMTP, you know, and email providers and follow-up sequence and all this average card value. I mean, it is a whole world. It is a vernacular. It's a language. And I started realizing, like, that's a lot of stuff. Like, no wonder people have a heart. Like, so the second question was the more important one, though. With my team, with my own team, I started, I started, I asked the second question, what on this list is not? marketing if we know that marketing causes cash as a byproduct what on that list is frankly a distraction and so we went through and we started crossing off we crossed off almost every single thing on that list except for three things and those are the three things that i have a very hard time outsourcing all right and, and the first is it's very 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 hard to make any amount of money uh without the correct message right 
and it, it, that's hard to outsource. Um, message, offer, and campaigns. Those are the three. The, the offer piece, really, really, it matters tremendously. Um, but I mean, you and I both know there's people who have a crappy offer that make a lot of money. So it's like, don't do that, obviously. Anyone who's watching or listening to this now, don't do that. Be ethical, be moral with all this stuff. It's powerful stuff, messing with people's brains. But like at the same moment though, to sit back and realize that, okay, if it's message, offer, and campaigns, really, we even can get rid of offer. It's really message and campaigns. Messages and campaigns are the two things that actually pull cash off the table. Um, everything else, like, I hope you're involved in the offer. Like you should, should still be involved in what you want to go sell people. But uh, those two skill sets alone, those are the cash drivers. And, and largely, so when I go, like when I build funnels for a client, you know, or if I, you know, whatever, like the thing I will never let them release from themselves are those three things of like, I have to have your involvement in this or I'll not even touch your funnel. Like, cause this, you know, funnel, funnels are easy. Right? A monkey can do it. <laughs> it's the message. It's the offer. It's, it's the fine. campaign. Those are the things that make it work. It's funny because I, I have a funnel where I made about 50 sales of 190 pounds, uh, British pounds, about $235 yeah. product. So it's going quite well. But the funnel yeah. is going out next week because I've been spending a month and a half with a friend of yours, I, I believe. And I'll tell you yeah. more about that in a moment. Uh, that's a hope for you. Uh, revising <laughs> the copy. You know, every word is really crafted to ethical principles of persuasion, right? I want people who will benefit from solving the problem that I'm solving to buy from me instead of somebody else. And I went out with an MVP like everybody should, right? So with a minimum viable product, my course is 28 videos, 17 modules. Now the V2 is already ready to be published. It will be double. So it pains me to go out without the value, but I had no choice. So I yeah. think you said the word ethical, and that's so important because if you do it yeah. ethically, you know, I so my, my motto is grow your income, grow your impact. I'm about giving. I grew up very poor. So my mom and I were forced to take, take, take us, you know, when I was little. Yeah. And whenever I made something of myself, I wanted to give, give, give. So I've always given. And recently I uh, signed two partnerships with two fantastic organizations. Actually, I'm going to plug them. One is CAMFET, a campaign for female education that brings wow. education to um, African women. And let wow. me tell you, if the, the world was run by women, there will be very little poverty in very little world. So, yeah. and the second is um, Just Well Aware. There is a US-based um, charity that supports uh, children in Africa bringing clean water. Now, because I have this, I sell like a tiger <laughs> because right. it's all my money. You know, 20% of everything that I make goes to them. So I have a responsibility to do it. And so the word ethical really serves as a massive crutch because then I can do it, right? So it's yeah. very interesting. And the man absolutely. is, by the way, Akbar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 You mentor. know what's funny is like my whole quip is, you know, get rich, give back. But I always follow that with like, you don't have to be rich to give back. And in fact, if you're not practicing giving back when you're poor, you probably won't when you're rich. Like <laughs> being poor is training wheels and frankly, a snapshot of how you'll probably behave when you're rich. Yeah. You know, it's like, totally. if you're a jerk when you're poor, you'll probably be a bigger jerk when you're rich. Money's just an amplifier. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think I heard you guys say, I always say, you know, money doesn't change. It makes you more of what you are already, right? And we already are. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have to give money. You can give time. You can give thoughts. Yeah. If that's all you have, send people good thoughts, you know? Yeah. Give it, right? It works. Yeah. Good. Last question. Mm -hmm. Now, this yeah. is the question that everybody that follows me, you know, I, I have people, you know, I run an agency. So there's people that follow me for other things that don't even know what funnels are. But for those that like funnels and I adore funnels, this is a, the golden nugget, right? So you've gone through, how many funnels have you gone through? Do you know? Do you know the actual number? How many funnels? Not have anymore. You <laughs> Not anymore. Right? I have no idea. So you've gone through many funnels. What are a the lot. commonalities? amongst those that win? Are there commonalities amongst the funnels that win? Yeah, there are, there are. Uh, I actually have a 12 step process I use to design, launch an evergreen, every offer. And um, so, I mean, it's a three day answer. <laughs> but uh, 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 but the, the commonalities though, you know, actually I'll use this uh, for a moment. Um, you know, when I, was, when I was studying to become an officer in the army, I was I, I enlisted, and then um, and then I went. I was you know I was back in college, and I wanted to go become an officer. And there's one semester where all we had to do is study wars um, within this class. It was really cool, and we studied battles. It looks like football plays, frankly. There's X's and there's lines, and this guy moved his you know his his uh, 
soldiers this way and this guy, you know, so it's, it's really fascinating. But in order to do that and really understand a battle, you also have to go political and cultural as well. Yes. And so we'd study the politics and the history and it was super fun, very fascinating semester with this brilliant historian. At the end of the semester, he made this off the cuff comment that, that honestly has influenced so much of how I have marketed. And um, <clears throat> because I think the answer might be a little different than, than what most people think though, when I say to this, um, he sits back and he's kind of like, like, whoo, like that was, oh, good job. Good semester, everybody. Like it was a really aggressive, you know, it was a lot of studying, a lot of reading, a lot of writing papers and stuff and reading old guys, dead journals, you know, <laughs> you know, and this was, so anyways, at the very end, he sits back and he goes, whoo, you know, what's fascinating is <clears throat> there's not really ever been a war that started because of social issues. He said, wars always start because of rights. And I was like, huh. He's like, think about it. He's like, you know, like what's a really big social issue that has happened recently in America? Gay marriage. Not a, no battle, no war started over that. But there's definitely wars that start over rights. You know, and he started giving these kinds of examples. He's like, think about this. Think about this. Think about this. Think about social issues. Social issues going on right now, right? And in, in America, it's kind of upheaval. Like there's stuff going on. But there's never been like a war war that started over that. It's always started because of rights. And that stuck with me. And I started realizing that as a marketer, once the funnel is over, the mistake is to keep looking at the funnel. That's not my job anymore. My job is to do one of two things. And the first is either to create noise in the direction of the funnel. So I get sales. A lot of ways to do that, obviously. Frankly, an infinite number of ways. So, I, this, so while the first is to create noise, the second, though, is to align with where noise already is and take a stand. And you think about that. So Russell created the noise around funnels and he is brilliant and he has hundreds of employees and he has lots of resources and still the world is barely just finding out what a funnel is. You think about the road that it takes to go, go the number one route, would it create the noise? Like yeah. that is tough. Or number two, I can just align with where noise already is. So the question to ask myself is what are the social issues that I could ride on the back of that I truly believe in that I could sell my products on the back of. Right, right, right. That's very interesting. Capitalism versus socialism, this is not new at all. But what I am doing is I have actively made it part of my marketing. Now, I'm not, no political stance. This is probably as close as you can get to not making a po like an actual political stance of the brand, right? <laughs> right? No political stance. I'm not out here saying, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even getting into like any politics. I've made it a rule of mine to not say anything political. Um, in, in my marketing and for my branding, this, because this is not a political stance. So I can't have it be attached to something. You don't have to be some right or left or whatever in order to be a capitalist. And so I'm like, cool. If I, capitalism versus socialism, that argument has been around for a long time. And there's already a charge around it, aligned with where attention already is. If I just say what I already believe, don't do this if you're trying to be fictitious, you know, or you're trying to like cause, that's dumb. But if I really truly believe in one of these social issues out there, pretty easy for me to use that as a front end, which I am, to get all these people in my direction and sell my products on the back. And when targeted at a specific marketplace and uh, location, markets are locations, not people, right? And I know that my dream customer goes to that location and I'm saying these things to it, it actually makes the game really, really easy. Um, I'm just riding the wave. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. What a great note to, to finish on. Before we go, I know you're super busy. Thank you so much for giving us our time. I know that we're yeah. kind of over the time that you had allocated. So thank you so much. Is there oh, anything pardon. else that you would want me to ask you that I haven't? Yeah, you know, I think the, 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 the most beneficial hidden the coolest hidden benefit that's come from this whole thing for me has been uh, not something that I expected, actually. Um, in fact, I've reflected on this a lot in the last six months. Um, and it's that when, when, you, when you gain some extra resources in the form of time and money, um, there's this really interesting thing that happens. Um, I feel like a lot of us stay buried in work so that we don't have to look at the things we're not happy with in our lives. Right. Um, or we will use work or entrepreneurship or next funnel, next funnel, next funnel, kind of this nervous twitch attitude towards creation 
to not look at the things that we may need to solve in our own heads as well. And so I'll say that, that you know, you, your, your business really only grows to the level that you do. That's a common phrase, yeah. but it is true. Is. And, and if there is any other reason that someone should go try and purposely get rich, because it's not going to happen on accident, so go get rich on purpose, right? Um, if there's any other reason besides the actual monetary um, security itself, um, any other reason to go get rich besides just the money, it is to go and create time freedom to work on your own head. And uh, it's been a side benefit of mine. I just have never, I mean, I have a, I have a therapist, a counselor, a psychiatrist, a food person, a trainer. It's like, there's like, <laughs> woof, there's all these people now around me because it's suddenly like, oh my gosh, I get to look in the mirror and not run from the mirror and be like, dang, man, you got some stuff to work on, you know? <laughs> like, but now there's some time and money resource to go allocate to get those things fixed or address or whatever. And, and uh, that, that is like such a cool aspect of entrepreneurship. And so I desperately hope anyone watching, listening now gets rich because you will be a greater blessing to yeah. humanity with greater eyes, not just resources, as you fix the junk in your own head. Grow your income, grow your impact, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Man, I appreciate you very much. Thanks for everything that you do for the community. And it's been fantastic to have you on. Hey, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. I really love doing it.